the historic towns of Nantau and Dapeng was built um, in this area around about 600 years ago. And this photo and the next two were taken at Dapeng. By 1688, there were 28 towns in the Xi'an County, of which one of these towns were Shenzhen, um, but the name was later changed and later changed back again. In uh, 1979, the Guangdong Provincial Administration and the district of Huiyang announced their proposal to rename, rename Baoan County to Shenzhen, and it was approved and put into effect on the 5th of March of that year. Um, the city uh, that was now established as Shenzhen also had six districts, Lohu, Nantau, Songgang, Longhua, Longgang, and Kuiyong. In January uh, of 79, the Central Committee of the Communist Party approved a plan to establish the Circo Industrial Zone in Shenzhen with a purpose to lead domestic, overseas, and diversified operations, industrial and commercial integration, and trading. And it was based on the same system that was already implemented in Hong Kong and Macau. Deng Xiaoping was the paramount leader of the People's Republic of China from 1978 to 1989. Um, in 1980, the Central Committee designated Shenzhen, Shenzhen as a special economic zone. It was created to be an experiment, uh, experimental ground for the practice of market capitalism within the uh, community, guided by the ideals of socialism. It is beyond, beyond the scope of this presentation to go into detail of the life and achievements of Deng Xiaoping, but it is worth looking up on the internet. You will find he was a very interesting person. He was, for instance, named the Time Person of the Year in 1978 and in 1985 for his reforms. His revolution combined social, socialist ideology with free enterprise. He called it socialism with Chinese characteristics. And that phrase I actually heard several times during the um, 40th anniversary celebrations uh, speeches this year. <clears throat> All the photos in this presentation were taken at a place somewhere on this map. Um, in fact, except for one photo in Guangzhou, let me just help you to point to it. Uh, Guangzhou is here. Um, a few photos from Dongguan over here. Um, Dongguan is north of Shenzhen, here is Shenzhen. Um, Yangzhou Chen, or we call it actually Yangzhou Dao, is over here in the east. And in Hong Kong in, in the south, all the other photos were taken from places reachable through the current Shenzhen subway or city bus network. According to the World Bank Group, the Pearl River Delta, or PRD, has become the largest urban area in the world in both size and population. As well as the Delta itself, the term Pearl River Delta refers to the dense network of cities that covers nine prefectures um, of the province of Guangdong, including Shenzhen. The 2010-2011 State of the World Cities Report, published by the United Nations Human Settlements Program, estimates the population of the Delta region at 120 million people, and it was rapidly urbanizing. Currently, it's estimated to be around 150 million people. Shenzhen is bordered by Hong Kong on, in the south, Huizhou in the northeast, and Dongguang in the northwest, and shares maritime borders with Guangzhou, uh, Chongshan, and Zhuhai to the west and southwest across the estuary. Shenzhen is an international hub for research, 
and innovation in China and ranks 32nd among the world's top 200 science cities by specific scientific research as tracked by the Springer Nature Index. It has the third busiest container port in the world. And some other stats, at present, the average age in Shenzhen is less than 30, with only 3.1% age over 65. Um, the total area is, uh, of, uh, Shenzhen area is uh, 1,992 square kilometers. And that gives it a, a population density of about 10,000 inhabitants per square kilometer. Shenzhen Metro is an example of what we locally, uh, and, uh, what is locally known as Shenzhen Speed. Shenzhen Metro is the fourth longest metro system in China and the sixth longest in the world, despite having only opened the first line in 2004. Currently, it consists of 11 lines with a total of 412 kilometers. Line 8 was opened on the 28th of October. Yes, that was yesterday. Um, and this coming weekend, we're going to explore that um, line to see what it leads to. The current development under uh, way include connecting Dongguang in the north and Huizhou in the east by 2022. In fact, in the report I read, they said that for the next couple of years, um, they're going to add 200 kilometers per year to the um, subway network. By 2013, the network is planned to comprise of eight express and 24 non-express lines, totaling 1,142 kilometers. A project was also approved this year for building a maglev line between Guangzhou and Shenzhen. It will reach a speed of more than 500 kilometers per hour, and the travel between Guangzhou and Shenzhen will be less than 15 minutes. Okay, that was my introduction. Travel photography spans a very broad spectrum of photography, and nowadays photographic holidays has become more and more specialized to cater for specific photographer preferences. Um, but if you are new to a specific destination, it is a good idea to let you first visit the place uh, and take some photos that we call scapes, some photos that I will call recreational activities and some street photography. So don't specialize on your first trip to some new place. Um, in a presentation like this, it is however very difficult to have it strictly categorized as for instance, the scapes will include both landscapes as well as cityscapes. On top of that, most of the landscapes are actually taken within parks. And although I have a category called, category called street photography, it will definitely also include some people recreational activities in parks. So I use this three categories more to pace myself through the presentation than anything else. So let's start with scapes. And I'm going to start at the at familiar ground, uh, which is a cityscape uh, from Honghu Gongyuan. Honghu Gongyuan is, or Honghu Park is the park right across from where we live. We are actually living in this building here. Um, and this is the park. Like all the other parks, it's actually a water feature with a park around it. And we often walk uh, this, we did it tonight again. Um, and it's about four kilometers to walk right around um, the uh, water on the uh, pathways around it. Um, this is a view north of the park, a cityscape, with a bridge uh, that actually is in the middle of the park. Um, it's not on the far end. And that bridge is known as the um, Rainbow Bridge. And it's no, known for that because at night, 
it is lit up with animated lights that um, uh, reflects the colors of the rainbow. While I'm at um, night photography, I just want to quickly jump in with this one uh, photo that I took, um, I think about two or three weeks ago. And I took this because of the cranes that is lit up on top of um, this building, a new building that is erected there. Um, as it is so typical of Shenzhen, uh, the skyline of Shenzhen always have sky uh, um, cranes on top of skyscrapers as they are still building. Shenzhen is getting built every day and every night. Um, back to um, Honghu Park, um, on the south uh, edge of the park um, is an uh, interesting um, interchange. And in summertime, in springtime, the Bokan Villas are really beautiful on, on this um, uh, bridge, really worthwhile looking at. Um, here's another uh, um, cityscape with a park in front. It's actually Lianhua um, Park. Um, and it's, give, it's giving a, a really beautiful view because it's, it has this little hill, a very good view on that um, civic center. Um, the photo that I started um, my talk with was a view of civic center. Um, the other interesting feature is this tower that you see over here. It is called the Ping An building, um, and it is the highest building in Shenzhen. <coughs> um, it's it's the headquarters of the Ping An insurance company. It was the company was founded in 1988. Ping An literally means safe and well. Ping An ranked. The Ping An building, uh, no, Ping An ranked seventh in the Forbes uh, Global 2000 list and 29th in the Fortune 500 um, list. This building consists of 115 stories and is um, 599 meters high. The building was completed in 2017, becoming the tallest building in Shenzhen, the second tallest in China, and the fourth tallest building in the world. It also broke the record for having the highest observation deck in a building at 562 meters. And this is a view of um, the civic center from that um, um, observation deck. Okay, let me uh, talk a little bit less for a few slides. Um, this is Lichi Park, another of my destinations that I very regular go to. Um, it's about 20 minutes uh, drive with one of the shared bikes. One of my infrared photos. You do know that I like infrared photos, or many of you do know I like infra uh, taking photos in infrared. So throughout this presentation, you will see some infrared photos. Um, just of interest, this building is the headquarters of the DJI drone company. Um, we visited uh, the Shenzhen Bay um, one early morning and found that it was actually low tide. I didn't know that it's going to be low tide. And I saw this barrier and I thought it will be great to do a closer inspection. And I found that that strange line in front of the poles is actually sandbags and they made for really beautiful abstract photos. So that morning was not landscape photography, but abstract photography. Although Shenzhen is in a subtropical area, there are some places where you do find um, autumn colors during autumn.
This is one of the um, beautiful bays called Dalmatia. On the map, I showed you the far right hand side of the map. I showed you Yang Tsou Dal, um, which is an area outside of Shenzhen, and the subway is not going there at the moment. So we had to go there by other transport. Um, it's a beautiful area, and I think I need to. I've been there only for one weekend, actually, one night. Um, we arrived on the Saturday afternoon and came back on the Sunday. So it needs better exploration. I, I still plan to go there again. Yes, the same scene, but taken with infrared. The interest part is that if you go up he the hill, you have a view of the um, fishing farms in the estuary. And this is some of the fishing farm areas. I want to uh, end the uh, uh, um, scapes part by showing just a few Hong Kong photos. And no visit to Hong Kong will be complete if you didn't go for a sunset up Victoria Peak to see the city at sunset. It's really uh, some, something to see. Okay, the next part will be parks. As I spent most of my outdoor time in Honghu Park, most of the photos will actually be from there. We are very fortunate to live across the street from a, a, a park. Early on, I made the decision to always carry my camera with me when going to a park. Actually, I carry the camera always with me, no matter where I go, even if I go and buy some milk. Parks play an important role in the average Chinese person's life. It is, a use, it is used for relaxing after a hard day's work or to get that important exercise early morning or to learn a new hobby. As photographer, this is a photo paradise. Um, kite flying as a hobby is uh, very uh, um, much uh, practiced on, on Saturdays and Sundays, but it actually can become a very serious um, hobby for some people. Dancing is one of the other things you will always encounter when you go to any park in Shenzhen or in China, I think. Um, dancing is uh, um, very informal dancing, group dancing for exercise, as well as really formal dancing and even training by uh, professional dancers um, that actually charge you for that in the parks. Because we live so close together, the parks are the only place to learn a new skill that might disturb the neighbors. A visit to a park guarantees an encounter with some musicians. I actually have a folder on my computer where all my musician photos go. The, the la latest one I took was actually this past Monday afternoon. Um, and again, some infrared photos. Um, this area, this is actually the leaves and you can see some of the flowers um, of the lotus flowers. Um, Honghu Park is known in Shenzhen as the park of uh, lotus flowers. So if you want to see lotus flowers in the summer months when they are in full bloom, um, there's no better place to come as to Honghu Park. 
another infrared photo. And the lotus flowers actually die down during the winter months. Um, I actually check tonight and I think it's time for me to um, uh, add to this gallery of my um, abstract um, photos because even when they die down, they are still very photogenic. In mid-summer, we actually have a Lotus Festival in um, Honghu Park, which lasts for two weeks. And during that time, they actually have mist sprayers that uh, gives you a very nice soft uh, feel to uh, photos. It is very popular and the crowds are actually every day coming to, to see the spectacle of these Lotus flowers and obviously to take their own photos. Right next to um, Honghu Park is another park called People's Park. And this park is um, best known for its rose garden on the central island. It is one of the largest rose gardens in China with more than 50,000 flowers of over 300 cultivars. Um, first of October is uh, called uh, National Day in China. It's a very, very popular um, holiday. Um, this past National Day, um, I saw some of the stats that um, more than 600 million people traveled by train to their home destinations for the holiday. Um, during the national holiday, uh, the government erect these red Chinese flags on almost every lamppost in the whole of Shenzhen. It is quite a spectacle to see. Chinese chess is almost part of a culture. Um, they play it always in the parks. Uh, you, every time you go to a park, you will find some uh, people playing uh, Chinese chess. And I actually even found a statue for Chinese chess. This tree is in the middle of um, the People's Park. And for me, this is an, the most beautiful tree. I very often go there um, just to check on the tree and to sit there um, having a coffee. I take coffee with me to the tree. And it looks over all the roses in the rose garden. Lichi Park is one of the other uh, um, places that I mentioned that I go to. I use a, a bicycle, um, these shared bikes, um, to, to uh, uh, go to closer destinations. Um, and this is just about 20 minutes from our home. And as I said, you will always find, find dancing in one of the parks. One of the other parks that I uh, didn't even know exist is called Music Park. Um, we went there one afternoon, but didn't have time. So we were just passing, actually walking through the park. So I took a few uh, photos. I had my infrared camera with me that day. Um, and I definitely need to go back and explore it a little bit better. But the interesting thing of the park was that all over the park, inside the gardens uh, there were artificial rocks that are actually speakers and it plays classical music throughout the whole park now parks doesn't look the way they look uh, on their own 
it actually takes hard work. There is huge teams in every park maintaining the park on a daily basis. If you go there early, early morning, you will find them doing something. And if you go there very late at evening, they are still working. And they does do a, a really great job. Okay, so that was my parks photos, but you, as I said, some of the street photos is also taken in parks, so you will see more park photos coming up. Street photography is defined as photographing people going about their daily life. For me personally, it needs to trigger my curiosity in some way to make it worth the photography. And one of those ways is composition. Composition is very important to me. I think I might have a hang up on the import, importance of composition in street photography. Some of the other things are uh, that tickles my fancy include topics such as being foreign to a point that I found it almost bizarre. Um, now, scenes that emphasize cultural differences is one of the other ones. I know this is a very subjective and uh, the opposite is also most probably very true. My personal behavior will most likely be seen as very foreign um, and very different from the, from the Chinese person's perspective. I also found that setting a scene to entertain is much bigger, a much bigger industry in China than in the rest of the world. I found entertainers in most obscure places with very little visitors, onlookers appreciating their talent. And in most cases, they don't uh, want money for their performances. So I start with a few monochrome photos, uh, specifically about composition, as the composition was the most important part for me when taking these photos. but also in color. This photo um, was taken at the Civic Center. Um, every Saturday afternoon and um, Sunday uh, afternoon, um, you find these break dancers um, at the Civic Center uh, playing there. It's most probably because of that floor that is so reflective. And I then try to create symmetry um, with this photo. The previous trip of um, South Africans who, who visited me here in China, we actually also went there uh, on a Saturday afternoon and photographed the break dancers. No trip to um, Shenzhen or to China will be uh, good enough if you haven't um, photographed one of the temples. Shenzhen has its own set of great temples and I personally like this Tzu one temple in the south of Shenzhen. Chinese know how to spoil, the <coughs> spoil themselves, sorry. Let me just drink something. It's apparently learned behavior. It starts very early, like in this parlor, just for boys to um, get their hair done. Ladies really know how to treat themselves. This lady has a face mask um, and sitting in the um, pharmacy with a face mask on. I don't know why she didn't want to go and do it at home. Um, but we were on a walk. It's about two weeks ago, I think. We were on an evening walk, photo walk, myself and five other photographers. And one of the photographers, Jeremy, he actually brought a mask with him. And during the walk, 
he hand out the mask to us one at a time and ask us to hold the mask so that he take photo of us in one of the settings that he thinks is great. Um, but then we saw this lady with a mask, the face mask sitting there and it directly clicked to us that our mask looks very similar to her mask. And then he dared us who will actually put on a mask and go and greet her. So I decided to take up the challenge. So I walked up to her, but I took the right aisle, walk past her, come back from the back so she doesn't see me. And then when I got next to her, I greeted her and she looked up and Jeremy took the photo while, I, while she was looking up. The interesting thing is she looked up at me. She didn't greet back. Then she looked back at her phone and continued reading whatever she was reading. I think this um, hobby is one of the most relaxing hobbies. Um, it is poets that write their poetry on the street walks in water. So it's only for a fleeting moment visible. And they hopefully get somebody intrigued to read their messages. New Year celebrations is also a very great spectacle in all Chinese towns. Um, these red um, decorations was hanging throughout the whole of uh, um, Lichi Park. I actually went there using my tripod and I photographed a set, a series of photos in with a 10 stop filter. Uh, so that the people are blurred, but still part of my scene. I do that quite often to, to go out specifically to go and take long exposure photos uh, of street scenes. So it will contain people, but the people are of lesser importance than the surroundings. This photo is for me, my real street photography. Um, I deliberately excluded most of my street photography work that I have in another uh, uh, slideshow, um, which hopefully will become part of the JAP uh, program on uh, street photography. Um, but this one, the, the gesture and the expression makes the story, um, which I then call envy. Or this lady just sitting there. Also, for me, a great street photo. Um, unfortunately, not at Hong Hu Gong Yuan, but at some of the other uh, parks, uh, they are a group of um, retired men who takes their birds for a walk to the park and then they sit together, they open the cages for the birds and the birds can socialize on their own. <laughs> this scene, <laughs> sorry, time to drink some water again. This scene is one of those um, that I want to say it, it caught my attention because of the bizarreness of the, the scene. Um, that building is from bottom to top full of broken used air conditioners. 
Um, I don't know why the guy sitting there is no other building close by. And then that, that uh, a transformer next to him um, really looks like it, it could actually be the cover of a scientific, uh, science fiction um, novel or something. Talking of bizarre, um, seeing poet, a poultry, um, chicken specifically, we see very often with their heads on is still something after I've been in China for quite some time, still something that we as Westerners are not used to. And every time I see it, I need to take a photo of it. These photos, a few of them are um, taken at Dongguan. Remember I mentioned that Dongguan is um, northwest of Shenzhen. Um, there's not a subway at the moment getting there. Uh, I had to go with a normal train, but um, in 2022, the subway is supposed to go all the way up there. Dongguan is about 60 kilometers from Shenzhen at, uh, uh, with the car. Chinese people are very uh, aware of their look. It's very important. And in Shenzhen, they are groups of people that dress up specifically for specific themes. And one of them that I've seen a few times are these people that dress up as um, 1950s people. Um, and they, they go all the way. Um, they buy and pay big dollars for those uh, old cameras. The cameras are actually working. That guy showed me that he did take some photos with morning already. Um, but the outing is about being in, in that uh, period. The other one that is gaining a lot of popularity in, in China at the moment is the Hanfu fashion um, uh, thing. Uh, Hanfu fashion is based on the Han people traditional clothing and was made popular um, by, uh, through uh, period dramas such as Nirvana, Nirvana in Fire, which uh, shall we actually did watch on TV as well, and the 10th grade uh, of Peach Blossom. Um, the local university has a, a Han Fu club, and they organize regular, regular outings and performances. Some of these Han Fu fans take it so serious that they wear uh, these clothes every day. A walk in the park on a weekend is almost guaranteed to have a photographic encounter with some of them. And they are really willing models. Although I love to take them uh, like this one, I took um, without them being aware of me. After I took a photo, I, uh, they did get aware of me and I actually took some uh, portraits of them as well. This is another group that I uh, found um, in a park. As you can see, they, are, they want to be photographed. And these two guys I found in um, um, Dongmen one evening. Um, very busy environment, full of normal dressed people. And then these two guys go out to go and have a coffee or sit in a bar or something. And they're dressed like this. If you are in China and you year crackers early in the morning it's normally the opening of a new shop it's a big ceremony and they do have lots of crackers and uh, full do 
this photo is actually a Hong Kong photo. Um, I think the only street photo from Hong Kong that I've included. Um, I call it a dying tradition. This is a typical colonial scene. A yuppie on a Saturday morning, nicely dressed out, reading the Financial Times, waiting for his shoes to be shined. Shenzhen is close to the sea, so you will definitely be able to photograph um, some sea scenes in, in Shenzhen. You need to, and hopefully with this Line 8 that's opened now, more of these sea scenes will also be possible to go to. I will go and check that out. Um, this is um, in an area called Nanao, and Nanao is one of the places I always take visitors to because it's it's quite photogenic. The other place um, is the Fisherman's, Fisherman's Harbor, which is a small harbor, not the big real Shenzhen Harbor, for fishermen. And if you find the right time, you will actually find them um, offloading stuff that you can photograph. In this case, they off offload um, mussels from the mussel farms. And a visit to Shenzhen will not be final if you haven't visited Dafen. Dafen is an art village where all the fake art or most of the fake art uh, um, of the world is actually made. And they are really great, these guys. They, um, they are, it's such a specialized thing. They, they try their best to uh, um, create it the, the way originally it was done. As you can see here, this guy is recreating this one scene um, over and over and over again, Van Gogh scene. Look at the detail of that uh, painting compared to the photo on his lap. For big commissions, they actually work together. They, they, um, this specific group were four people. There's the director um, or the teacher, they call him. And then there are uh, painters that specializes in specific things, like this guy on the left special, specializes in boats. And the guy on the right specializes in um, horses or uh, animals. And they, the, the, the teacher sits drinking tea, and he invited me to drink tea with him, which I did. And then he tells him, no, 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 this is not right. You need to do this extra there, or this needs more. And the other guy was waiting because he's doing the clouds, and he still needs to do the clouds after they finish with this. Thank you. Preparing this presentation, I realized that Shenzhen has all the ingredients to be an only travel destination. You don't need to go actually anywhere else. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to relook at my photographs. Uh, Jeff, we can yeah. actually open for questions. Yeah, we've got some questions. Thanks very much, Jan. I'll go through them. The, the four questions are very similar, so I'll sort of just summarize them. Um, and basically, people are asking, what is the attitude of the Chinese people and the authorities to taking photos in public places? How do they react? Um, do you generally ask their permission or do you have to do it secretly? I think you might have answered some of those questions. But just what is the general uh, attitude um, of people there to street photographers? 99% uh, of the time, it is perfectly. Um, it is, it's one of the more open places to actually do street photography. Um, people do not like, like in most places, for you to take a tripod with you. Um, 
they they associate the tripod with professional photography and then with professional photography you need to have a permit to go and do that of course you're going to make money out of that so wow. if you don't have a tripod they are mostly uh, okay with it that photos that um, i started with the av on the subway um, on one of the subway stations uh, the security guard came to me and said i must not take photos while I was photographing already. Uh, I actually took those photos last Friday. Um, and I was already taking the, f took photos for about three hours on the subway. Um, so that was foreign to me. So I asked him why not? And he said, I'm in the way of the people going to the, uh, um, the stairs. <laughs> it's very busy time. So that was the reason that I was not supposed to take photos. So it was not because I'm not allowed to take photos. Um, there's one place that, that I did take photos outside where that bull is. That place, the security guides said to me, I'm, I'm not allowed to take photos of that building after I took that photo. Of the building to my right hand side, um, that security guard came up to me and said, they have a policy that they're not allowed to take photos of the building. I don't know why. That's the only time that I've ever found a, a real issue. The, the, normal, the normal people in the street love to be photographed and they, especially if you then connect to them. I, I normally try and take uh, 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 photos that they're not aware of me, but most of the time when they do become, become aware, I'm not running away. I rather go towards them with a smile if, if you can't talk with them and they love to take a selfie with you. Okay. And just before I ask the next question, um, anyone is interested, you'll see Johan's um, different cases. You can connect with them at the bottom of the screen if you want to make a note of those. Um, Johan, the next question was uh, from Joan Rada. What made you choose China? <laughs> My wife. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is Chinese, and um, we actually wanted to stay in South Africa, but we had a problem getting uh, her uh, uh, residence permit in South Africa. So we said, let's try and see if I can get the residence permit for China. And it took four days. So <laughs> then, <laughs> then we decided yeah. to come to China. <laughs> OK. Um... Question from Carl Guerta, what equipment do you use? Um, you will see that the, that photo with me on with a mask on, the camera is actually around my neck. It's not very obvious that the camera was around my neck. It's a Fuji X100F. Um, I will say about 80% of the photos is taken with the X100F. I do start using the X-T3 more for my street photos. I didn't do it in the past because it's a bit larger, but the autofocus is so amazing on the X-T3 that I start using autofocus. With the X-1 and F, I normally do manual focus. Um, Evelyn is saying brilliant presentation, Jan. Thank you very much. Um, thank, thank you, Evelyn. Jürgen Husser is saying, fascinating, I'm envious of how unobtrusive your street photography photos are, especially the initial ones. <laughs> Thank <Isn't that> you. <laughs> um, question from Joan Ryder, do you speak Chinese? Um, I speak Chinese, <laughs> but I think it will take 10 years to really speak Chinese. I, I will say I understand about between 20 and 30 percent of what is uh, said to me, uh, but I can help myself very well in Chinese. Okay. Um, another question was from Jürgen. Do you have any ging ginkgo trees in any of the parks? Actually not. I photographed it um, in 2014 on one of the tours we had in another area uh, north of Shanghai. But over here, I haven't seen them. And a, a greeting from Antonio Chavri. Greetings from Mauritius. Thank you, thank you. Um, and uh, 
the other question is how safe is it to walk around with your equipment it's from david willen scott very awesome. safe uh, really very safe um shenzhen is more safe than other places because they have uh, they, because they are such an advanced techni technologically advanced they have lots of surveillance um which a lot of westerners doesn't like but it makes a place safe uh, surveillance makes a place safe um, to the point that people are actually not handling their gear well they will put their bag down walk 10 feet away to take a photo and turn around and it will still be there um, i'm i try not to do that i did the other day um, was sitting on a bench i had a small tripod with me and i wanted to use the tripod but i put it down on the bench next to me in the park and for some reason i walk stand up and walk away and forgot about the tripod and it, about 20 minutes later i remembered my tripod so i was running back and the tripod was still lying there on the bench mm. And there was thousands of people in, in the park at that stage. It's a pleasure. Um, yes. Greetings from Kevin and Arlene Mullins, who said they love uh, the trip. Yes. <laughs> and I highly recommend it to everyone. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yes, we had a great trip with them. Um, Marlene Lafrange, any wildlife or birding present? Yes, um, I forgot to mention that Honghu Park is also well known for its birds, um, water birds specifically, um, large as well as very small um, kingfishers, pied kingfishers, um, um, malachite kingfishers. Um, I have a, an American friend who is um, an, a bird photographer, so he comes to the park quite often and I normally accompanying him for uh, um, just for the for the social part of it and to speak something else in Chinese and he actually this afternoon asked me what am I doing tomorrow early morning because he would like to come and do some bird photography so tomorrow morning I'm going out to do bird photography um, just for those who haven't worked it out yet, it is actually already early morning with the hunting that we <laughs> hours in the morning. And, and really, thanks so much for, for staying up and, and joining us at, at your late hour. <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah, enjoyed yeah, Greetings from Lawrence and Ricky. Thank you. And also from Martin Bar. Okay. Um, um. And it was, so. Okay, that looks like all the questions um, and comments. So thank you very much. And, and thanks once again, Jan. We really, really appreciate it. And it's absolutely fascinating and, and so great for me to see a city that is so vastly different from ours. Okay, I think um, we'll have a break now. It's um, 25 to 8. So let's, um, we'll start again at quarter to 8. And then Anne is going to do the PSSA showcase. And I'm, I'm waiting to see how they've done in the various competitions. And I most probably will not stay up um, to look at the PSSA showcase. I hope that I will get the opportunity to see the show afterwards uh, if it's made available um, I think I need to go and sleep <laughs> yeah thanks so much sleep well okay bye 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 Anne.